Hello there. I just wanted to um, illustrate some further things with the Wheel of the Elements in this video. And uh, what I uh, wanted to show was um, how some of uh, our understandings have evolved over, over the years, um, at least to my point of view. Uh, and just to re recap, the Wheel of the Elements we're looking at is a wheel of um, psychological archetypes which were uh, discovered uh, by Tamar de Jong and some co-workers of his uh, back in the 1960s and work was continued on that by them and by uh, the Green Monks uh, which were collected around Tamo and also by Richard Gardner and Magenta Wise and just recently We've also had uh, some work published, uh, which is the work of Bran Collingwood. Now, in the original scheme, uh, we very much saw the Wheel of the Elements and the Wheel of the Archetypes as uh, a wheel of 12 archetypes, each associated with combinations of the elements. And they were combined in, in pairs. Um, and you got 12 of them because uh, you could have, uh, for instance, earth first, water second, but you could also have water first, earth second. So that ended up giving you uh, 12 archetypes. Uh, in the original scheme, these formed a circle of archetypes Then we simply viewed them all as uh, different sorts of uh, manifestations in people. Um, and all they all seem to be qu quite equal in a sense yeah um, so uh, y you could go around the circle trying to actualize these in yourself and you still can yeah um, we had the magician which was uh, very uh, airy and very bright uh, the enchantress was uh, very watery uh, very psychic very soulful the fool was very expressive and lively and brought joy and life into things um, the hearth priestess or the queen which used to be called the slave in the old system uh, was uh, is, a, is a very accepting uh, practical uh, earthy archetype yeah uh, the warrior was very forceful and willful and and very action oriented the sage was very detached um, and peaceful uh, so you had all these sorts of things yeah now the difference that I've seen come about with the work of Brian Collinwood is that we start to see a differentiation within this scheme um, into two functional groups essentially one is the Cardinals which are uh, the jester and the magician and mother nature and the enchantress who form the Cardinals of the elements uh, and uh, this is one group in a sense and the other group is the other other archetypes which uh, Bran termed the quadrant archetypes uh, which are uh, the uh, matriarch and sage for earth and air the patriarch and uh, and child or angel or nymph uh, for air and water the actress and the fool for fire and water and the warrior and the queen or hearth priestess for earth and fire and these all work in quite different ways and I've delineated that in some other videos yeah what we've really found and what has really come out from this is well a number of things uh, one, one thing that Bran really points out for a start is that fire and water are very dependent upon each other and earth and water are very dependent upon each other so the health of the magician is very much dependent upon its relationship to the gesture and vice versa the health of the enchantress is very much dependent on her relationship to mother nature and vice versa we also um, have found that it looks like uh, it almost seems to work in a way where you have uh, the energies the elemental energies of the cardinals uh, of earth air water and fire seemingly actually spreads out to their adjacent archetypes which they feed 
So you'll see that the jester gives his fire to the warrior and the fool, and secondarily to the hearth priestess and the actress. You'll see that Mother Nature gives earth to the hearth priestess and the matriarch, and secondarily to the sage and the warrior. Uh, but in a realistic sense, they give their elements to all of the archetypes, because all of the archetypes to actually manifest in our lives actually need all of the elements. Yeah? Uh, that's actually how it really works in fact and um, you get very interesting things from this you know you start to see after a while that the entire pattern of these archetypes is is very very interdependent and the movement of the energy depends on all of the energies in a sense it seems you know uh, so for instance remembering that water and fire always relate to each other and need each other and earth and water um, always need each other. Uh, you could look at say how does how does earth energy move out from mother nature into its adjacent archetypes? Well for a start earth always needs water to function so mother nature needs the water of the enchantress yeah it gives her a kind of core element almost yeah but for that energy to move out into the matriarch and the hearth priestess yeah into the combination of earth and earth and air and to the combination of earth and fire there also still needs to be a relationship with the enchantress the water still needs to be coming in there as a as a kind of affirming aspect on those archetypes and so that helps to draw out those energies and uh, the the matriarch is drawn towards the magician um, and so you can see the energy of the magician coming in as well. The energy of air comes in there. Uh, similarly, with the hearth priestess or queen, uh, as the earth energy moves out into the hearth priestess, it not only needs the support of the enchantress, water energy, it also needs the energy of the jester, the fire, coming in to give it its, its core element. Yeah. As it continues to move, we see then that the uh we moved over in on for instance with mother nature moving to the matriarch it then moves over to the sage so the earth energy moves over to the sage but it then really for that to be working well it needs the energy of the enchantress again the water energy to support it and um it also of course needs the energy of the magician coming in um similarly with the earth energy moving to the hearth priestess and then moving to the warrior it still needs the energy the water energy of the enchantress supporting it and it also of course needs the energy of the jester which gives it its its primary element of fire so you see you have all of these elements moving in yeah um now and that's and that's that's as far as it goes we don't go over the all the way to the magician because you see the the uh, the cardinal archetypes act as sources. They are sources of elemental energy in this way of looking at things. Another thing to point out here is that um, things like the sage and the warrior actually have a very supportive relationship with each other as well. Uh, and they form what we call a triad, yeah, with the enchantress. Um, so you can see that there's a, a lot of very interesting things there. You can see that the patterns are very interdependent and, and actually uh, quite complex. We look at them in a much more simplified ways because it helps us to understand different parts of, of the circle. It helps us to understand the manifestations of the elements in a more um, accessible way. But in fact, the actual what's actually happening can only be grasped as a whole in a sense. So we get the sense of that whole from all of the interrelationships so we see that in earth energy moving out into into its adjacent archetypes yeah we get water coming in even though water is not part of those archetypes as well as the uh, other element which is coming in to support them yeah and to make up their 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 uh, their well their makeup really you know um and we also see that we always have these supporting 
supporting relationships between archetypes as well. So when the thing is actually working, it is very much working as a whole, yeah? And when things aren't working, um, it's almost as if we're getting caught up in one part of it and we're not seeing the whole and we're not experiencing the whole. And then it seems like energies get blocked in a sense. But um, that's just part of what I wanted to say in this video, really. Or, well, it is what I wanted to say, essentially. Um, it's a, a wonderful system, a, a really elegant system if you look at it. Um, it's so beautifully um, manifested and you can see all of these patterns in it and they're quite quite wonderful and they tell you a great deal about how we can function harmoniously.